So, see, uh, our physiology mostly interlinked uh, chapters. Okay, so our body systems are dependent on one another. Okay, so yesterday in previous class we we discussed about the you know or the digestive system. Digest system uh, of human being. So why the digest system is needed? So for the foodstuffs. Ultimately, the foodstuffs that are needed for the body. That means the body means the cells. Why the cells need foodstuffs? For energy. So foodstuffs are needed for energy the how the energy is produced by respiration okay so in that way the digestive system is linked to a respiratory system okay right so digestive system is linked to respiratory system and here how the uh, food is oxidized with the help of oxygen how the food reaches to you know the cells by means of circulation blood okay so every system is related to each other system okay so we should understand the relation between the systems then only we will have the conceptual knowledge okay then we can easily answer the questions okay so if we have the concept in our brain Right. Anyway, so here respiration is a catabolic process. Okay. So we all know these technical terms. Just M M I'm revising. I'm simply revising. Okay, you have studied it well in your intermediate degree and PG and while you are teaching also, you might have prepared well. What I am doing, I am stressing some key points. I am giving very, very important points. Okay. Uh, and some conceptual uh, ideas. Okay. So, we all know that uh, all of our cell or our body undergoes many metabolic activities. So, various biochemical reactions that occurs uh, in our body that is called metabolic activities or metabolism. Okay. So, metabolism includes two processes. Anabolism and catabolism. So, so, what is anabolism? Simple. In single word, it is a synthetic process. It is a synthetic process. Okay. So, what is catabolism? It is the breakdown of a particular substance. So, it is breaking down our degradative pathway. That is catabolism. So, here you can take any amino acid synthesis in our body that is anabolic process any carbohydrate related or glycogen uh, synthesis that is an anabolic uh, metabolic activity okay so in the same way opposite to anabolism so catabolism catabolism example for catabolism best example for catabolism is respiration okay we should have this basic fundamental idea right so, it's a catabolic process of release of energy mostly by oxidation of foods. Simple. Okay. 
So today's class is completely theory oriented. Okay, tomorrow's class will be so some calculative, some analytical and interesting topic tomorrow. So today is anatomy of respiration, respiratory system. Anyway, so uh, there are some um, introductory points are given uh, in, the, in the book. So let's just, I'll read them. Okay. So if at all they are very much interested, I will stress them all. Right. So in fish, the respiration is occurred by gills and the direction of flow of water or encounter uh, counter and encounter current flow, sorry, or a counter current flow mechanism for efficient oxygen into the blood, oxygenation of blood, not oxygen, oxygenation. Right. So anyway, so it is not sequential, just introductory points are given in the book. I'm giving you as it is. Right. Right. So birds need more energy because the fly flight is very, very uh, energy requiring process. So they have an efficient double respiration. Mali Ostadi, just double respiration mechanism with the help of air sacs and parabranchi. Okay, what are parabranchi? So an additional uh, uh, sacs to the lungs. Okay. Uh, most of the arthropods, yeah, you should have this uh, point in your mind. Okay. Most of the arthropods send the oxygen to each and every cell of the body through trachea and tracheoles. So just like circulatory system, but there is no fluid in the trachea or trache tracheal system. So in the respiratory system of uh, most of the insects, uh, particularly insects and some of the arthropods, so their body contains a special tubular system. Only tubes are present without any fluid. Okay. And this system of tubes, they reach each and every cell direct into the cell. So from the uh, external uh, region to spiracles to direct to the cell. Okay. So that means every cell will have its own pipe, its own tracheole. Okay. So, there is an efficient mechanism of reaching or receiving oxygen in arthropods, particularly insects. So, that's why they are very, very active. And so, just this is a concept. This is an idea. This is exam. Right. So, then, See, at the high altitudes, about 6,000 meters, the partial pressure of oxygen becomes half. So, what it means, what it means at sea level, and Samudra Matanagra, and general, so it causes mountain sickness. So, mountain sickness in high mountain trekking people. Okay. So, at the altitude of 6,000 meters, oxygen levels are, uh, be, becomes half. So, there will be breathing problem that is called mountain sickness. Okay, uh, that's it. Oxygen and CO2 balance is under control of, yes, it will come after the uh, this uh, respiration uh, topic. So, regulation of uh, respiration on a topic low, when you stay. So, uh, uh, I'll explain what is respiratory center, how the respiration is, you know, uh, uh, controlled. Okay. So, whereas inhalation and exhalation are under control of, you remember this. In Mali, Manaku, Ekado, you know, respiratory system, Ochinapuru, Leather, nervous system, Ochinapuru. 
మళ్ళీ రివైజ్ అవుతుంది బట్ ఇన్హేలేషన్ అండ్ ఎక్స్హేలేషన్ ఆర్ సింపుల్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ రెస్పిరేషన్ ఈజ్ అండర్ కంట్రోల్ ఆఫ్ మెడుల్లా అబ్లాంగేటా ఇది కూడా మనకు గుర్తు చూసుకోవాలి రైట్ సో దెన్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఏ న్యూమోటాక్సిక్ సెంటర్ ఇన్ పాన్స్ పాన్స్ వేరోలియర్ బ్రెయిన్ ఇన్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ అండ్ ఇట్ కంట్రోల్స్ ద రేట్ అండ్ డెప్త్ ఆఫ్ బ్రీతింగ్ సో హౌ మచ్ స్పీడ్ ద రెస్పిరేషన్ షుడ్ అక్కర్ ఓకే సో దెర్ ఈస్ ఏ న్యూమోటాక్సిక్ సెంటర్ ఇన్ ద పాన్స్ వెరోలి సింప్లీ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ స్పెషల్లీ కాల్ ఎస్ పాన్స్ ఓకే ఇట్ కంట్రోల్స్ రేట్ అండ్ డెప్త్ ఆఫ్ బ్రీతింగ్ అదొక పాయింట్ ఇది మళ్ళీ వస్తుంది yeah so here elephant seal can stay in the water up to 2 hours okay so how it can stay being a mammal how it can stay okay so here the reason is given as due to the presence of myoglobin what is myoglobin myoglobin is a respiratory pigment myoglobin is a respiratory pigment what is the function of uh, myoglobin it stores the oxygen mali was the right so it stores the oxygen right so here myoglobin is almost 1 by 4th of hemoglobin okay a hemoglobin can uh, carry can hold four oxygen molecule whereas myoglobin can hold single oxygen molecule okay you remember again it will come uh, all living cells need energy it is acquired from oxidation of digested food materials such as glucose amino acids and fatty acids so yesterday in recent classes we have uh, discussed about the digest system of ultimately glucose like uh, monosaccharides are formed amino acids are formed fatty acids glycerol all, all those are formed so these not only glucose we should remember one thing i'm clearing this is another uh, important basic point there is a uh, false concept that only glucose can give energy no amino acids can also give energy fatty acids can also give energy so their oxidation gives energy to cells okay right then the oxidation requires oxygen in this process uh, oxygen in this process co2 is also released okay that's uh, all we, we all know co2 is a harmful gas that dissolves in water to form carbonic acid so what happens when carbonic acid forms so that imbalances the ph of blood the blood ph is reduced so that leads to very very fatal condition the respiratory acidosis okay that leads to death so all the cells need continuous supply of supply of oxygen okay for the oxidation of food stuff and continuous liberation of co2 from the body to the exterior okay if the co2 is accumulated in the body okay the cells cannot breathe uh, blood ox uh, acidity is increased okay so the person or the animal will die due to respiratory acidosis right so we should have a continuous supply of oxygen and a continuous release or sending out of co2 from the body the process of exchange of oxygen from air or water with co2 by the cells simultaneously is called breathing so there is no need to explain this okay breathing taking external uh, oxygen this is not option into the body and sending out the co2 from the body is considered as external respiration you you remember this okay what is actual respira- respiration the cellular respiration is actual respiration and breathing is simply called as external respiration or external ventilation okay so that is 
simple points these are uh, the definition of for expression is is process leading to and including the chemical breakdown of food materials to provide energy for life is called a respiration. This is according to textbooks. Okay, so no need to remember by heart that. As the chemical breakdown of food molecules takes place inside the body or within the cells. Okay, this process is called cellular respiration or internal respiration. So this is actually a uh, modern, uh, you know, biologists consider this as actual respiration in which the energy is released where in the cells okay so due to the oxidation of, by the oxidation of foodstuffs okay so this process is also known as you know the cellular respiration or internal respiration okay based on action sorry Oxygen utilization. Uh, respiration is of two types. We all know that anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Yeah. So you should uh, by heart this, uh, you know, uh, the reaction. Okay. So incomplete, what is anaerobic respiration? Incomplete breakdown of food molecules without utilization of oxygen. Without utilization of oxygen is called, you know, the uh, anaerobic respiration okay so we all know that example this is yeast and bacteria and our skeletal muscles you remember this point so we are aerobic organisms okay all the vertebrates okay higher animals are uh, you know aerobic uh, animals okay but in our body also anaerobic respiration takes place i was asked uh, this question in an interview okay so in which part of our body uh, occurs uh, anaerobic respiration i was first confused but uh, within a fraction of uh, seconds i have controlled myself and uh, i thought logically and i answered okay so whenever there is a strenuous exercise, okay. So in which the muscles or skeletal muscles participate, okay. In that moment, oxygen levels are depleted. That means oxygen levels are completely over. But still, the muscle works. The muscle needs energy. In that period, in that time, the sarco you know, sarcocytes or myocytes, they undergo anaerobic respiration in which the glycolytic, only glycolytic pathway occurs. After glycolysis, the pyruvic acid will be converted into either ethanol in our body, it will be converted into lactic acid. See, in our body, it is converted into lactic acid. Just names and anaerobic respiration reaction low two ATPs are produced. Okay, and the resulting substances are ethanol in yeast and bacteria. Okay, so and in the lactobacillus and in strenous exercising muscles lactic acid is produced so anyway only two net atps are produced that is anaerobic respiration we all know that so aerobic respiration that involves oxygen for the oxidation of foodstuffs okay so we all know this reaction also yeah six the c6 h12 o6 plus 6 h2o plus 6 o2 gives 6 co2 plus 12 h2o 36 atp it depends it depends on the cells, uh, the resultant number of ATP. There is new calculations according to new books. 
Okay, so there is 30 or 32 ATPs. Okay, so that will be explained in uh, next class. Okay, anyway, so 36 ATPs. So according to old uh, calculations, in aerobic respirations, respiration 36 or 38 ATPs, net ATPs are produced. Okay, then yeah, respiratory organs. So we should have uh, a glance of respiratory organs. Okay, how they are, they, these are the fundamentals. We should just have a look that is compulsory, right? So depending on the animal, these are different. Okay, there are different respiratory organs are present. Lower animals like protozoans, sponges, nidarians, flatworms, they perform, they perform respiration by simple diffusion thelian valu idi gurtunchukondi telisina vallu okay revision anukondi so by entire body so what happens their body for example protozoans they are made up of, they are unicellular organisms their uh, body is simple single cell that is surrounded by a simple plasma membrane so the dissolved oxygen which is present in the water Okay, directly can what is diffusion? So movement of gases or substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. Simple. Okay. So but a rule principle in the end. So from higher concentration to lower concentration. In the water, the oxygen concentration is more. So uh, they uh, enter into the body of the these uh, lower animals like protozoa, even sponges, even though they are uh, multicellular uh, and uh, nidarians and flatworms, which are aquatic uh, in their habitat. Okay, so in these animals, the oxygen directly can enter. The body allows, the body, their body allows them uh, to take oxygen. To enter the oxygen into their body, that is simple diffusion from higher concentration from the their surroundings, okay, from lower concentration to the to their body, okay. So that is simple diffusion. Entire body participates. There are no specific respiratory organs in these animals, okay, right. So this is GK question. It was asked many many times in many uh, entrance examinations. Not in the subject, but in the uh, general studies paper. So, earthworms, their body wall is always moist because some dorsal pores are present from which continuous leakage of, you know, the silomic fluid, okay, he is leaked continuously. So, that moist, they're very, very thin uh, body wall okay and uh, the blood vessels are you know vas the, the body wall is highly vascularized and it is very very thin okay so and for the exchange of oxygen and co2 they need you know very very thin body wall not only thin body wall but a moi a layer of moisture then only the oxygen and CO2 can dissolve into that moisture layer and the exchange of these gases takes place. So you remember earthworm's body and the body wall and chala thin and a body wall highly vascularized. That means blood capillaries and it went chala Okay, and its body wall is very, very thin, and the body externally is uh, contains a moist layer due to the continuous leakage of you know the silomic fluid from dorsal pores so the moisture allows to the uh, the respiratory gases to dissolve in it and uh, immediately the oxygen is diffused into the respiratory sorry blood capillaries and co2 is uh, sent out through this body bar okay so the, the earthworm uh, respires by you can say it as by skin and a post. Okay, 
So body wall, uh, so zoological term. Right. So insects, this is the tracheal system. This is the first vision. And this is important for the examination. It is asked in many exams of zoology. So book lungs. So there are, they are not actually true lungs. Okay. So, but there are some kind of air sacs and uh, it looks like a book. Okay. Example. What are the, in which organisms, the book lungs are respiratory organs. Okay. Spiders and scorpions. And then, I forgot to write, uh, echinoderms, they contain some outgrowths of skin called populae. Okay, they are the outgrowths of skin. Outgrowths of skin. So, they also highly vascularized. So, oxygen, CO2 exchange takes place through them. Okay. So, yeah, we all know that aquatic arthropods, mollusks, fishes, amphibian, larvae, and some urodils of adult urodils, not, uh, not only larvae, adult urodils. Okay, that will come in vertebrates. So, they contain gills. Ikada fish work okay. So amphibian larvae, man telugu chiruka part. It resembles, you know, uh, a fish. Okay. So tadpole larva. And uh, adult urodils contains external gills. Okay. So anyway, these are some of the animals and their respiratory organ organs. And terrestrial higher animals like reptiles, birds, mammals. Okay, their respiratory organs are lungs. They are elastic and sac-like structures. Okay, so they are also highly vascularized. You should remember. Okay, lungs and gali avi air bags. Okay, what next? So lungs are also highly vascularized. Okay, what you da chala blood capillary sunday. So immediately lungs loki air reach gaga ne blood loki oxygen ne the entry kote CO2 ne the blood lo nunchi lungs lo kosto that is the basic thing right so another interesting uh, respiratory uh, mechanism in uh, frog we can see just like you know earthworms the frog also contains a, a layer of moisture on their skin due to some uh, you know dermal glands okay and they also contain lungs they also contain lungs that is second and uh, there is another part of the mouth inside the mouth that is called bucco pharyngeal cavity because these animals uh, buccal cavity and pharynx is not separated due to lack of neck. So that's why their, their uh, buccal cavity and pharynx is commonly known as buccopharyngeal cavity. So these three structures are areas that performs, you know, breathing or external respiration. All these are the uh, respiratory organs, external respiratory organs only. Okay. So, cellular respiration is common for all the organisms, right from the unicellular organisms to and uh, highly developed mammals, right? So, then, yeah, this is the respiratory system. Yeah, human respiratory system. Okay. So, we have, uh, we all know just. Uh, we have to have a general idea what are the parts of respiratory system. Some important points are also uh, we should remember. Okay, so it includes first externally external nails, nares are external nostrils. And what are what you manam this one? External nostrils. So one pair of external nares are present above the lips. Okay, that's fine. 
nasal chambers okay external nostrils enters into nasal chambers uh, nasal chambers okay so they are you know lung chambers i mean lengthy from external nares to internal nares or internal nostrils okay they are uh, you know extended we have discussed it uh, during the digestive system or buccal cavity so they are present above the palate okay so we all know that a palate separates buccal cavity and you know the nasal chambers okay so nasal chambers have three parts vestibular part respiratory part olfactory part so what is vestibular part this is anterior part it has hair and sebaceous glands which secretes sebum okay in human being to prevent dust particles okay so hair and sebaceous glands they, they trap the dust particles simple right so respiratory part so you remember this which part of the our respiratory passage cools the inspired air okay so that is a respiratory part of the nasal chamber it cools the cooling mechanism too right contains three bony plates they are called turbinal bones or concave so turbinal bones or concave are present in right so then third part of the nasal chambers is olfactory part okay so that is useful for the uh, sensing the sense of smell okay smell identify uh, we will have the you know um, neurons okay so that can identify the smell okay then next part of the respiratory system third one is nasopharynx in the in the pharynx there are three parts this is you know uh, one of the uh, part of the pharynx okay so oropharynx nasopharynx laryngopharynx okay this is the second one so nasal chambers lead to nasopharynx by a pair of internal nostrils these are very 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 prominent in the evolution of the respiratory system internal nostrils internal nostrils and it evolution lo chala very very crucial uh, part manam konni vishayalu chala simple ga untayi for example uh, you know see uh, the development of thumb mana hand lo thumb anedi okati manakanna mundunna animals ki undadu okay so, what four fingers I mean vertebrates like early vertebrates fifth finger farm and that direction is opposite to uh, somewhat different uh, direction to other fingers okay there is a link between this thumb formation and the evolution of man evolution of brain so brain in evolution jargadani ki man yoka ade from the you know uh, undeveloped uh, animals like uh, apes nunchi human brain develop gada human being form gadaniki so ee thumb form gadam anedi chaala link undi okay so how so simple so due to different direction of thumb okay the person the the human being should hold whatever he wants to and could do whatever he wants to uh, different you know um, per, uh, uh, he can do different actions due to this arrangement okay no other animals have this kind of arrangement so due to that so holding became very easy that made him to think so what should we do with this what should we do with that okay so how can i climb how can i hold okay so like that so there is a link here also in the fishes particularly in the dipnoi fishes there will be uh, you know uh, internal nostrils but prior to dipnoi fishes like uh, you know um, 
plastic fishes they do not contain internal nostrils so there are no uh, lungs which are efficient respiratory organs okay so then after formation of internal nostrils okay the from the you know uh, the pharynx the lungs are evolved uh, as an outgrowth and uh, they became lungs later Due, with the, uh, due to the presence of internal nostrils. Anyway, they are present uh, above the soft palate. Okay. Uh, that is about the nasopharynx. And uh, yeah, this is the structure. Uh, one, let's see once. Right. So this is epiglottis and larynx, which is a sound box. And this is very, very uh, long tube. Okay, so that is uh, reached up to mesothorax. Okay, so this is called trachea. Otherwise, it is also known as windpipe. Okay, and in the mesothorax, each trachea is divided into two branches. Okay, so, so sorry, this trachea is divided into two uh, branches. They are called, each one is called bronchus. Bronchus is again divided into so many bronchi, bronchioles, terminally, they are ended in alveolar sacs in the alveolar sac many alveoli are present okay so and you should remember this structure this is a do uh, dome shaped diaphragm which is made up of a special muscles called phrenic muscles okay diaphragm muscles in phrenic muscles this is lower part Diaphragm undi. lateral guy on the rib cage undi. okay the vs so here lateral part rib cage so front and a lungs key front of direction lay on the sternum into the low the end back a on the so vertebral column so the, the lungs are arranged in such a way that a small change in the thoracic cavity, thoracic cavity is completely airtight chamber. Okay, a small change in that airtight chamber that reflects on the movement of the, you know, this uh, lungs. Okay, so uh, let's see the points. Yeah, so larynx. So larynx look on important points for time. Larynx is nothing but sound box. which produces the sound, okay. So, Swarapet Kata Telulo. So, it's a cartilaginous box, this, this one. You should remember, once again, uh, the pharynx enters into the, this larynx, okay, by an aperture, you know, aperture that is called glottis, you know, Digestive system explanation of Japan. Randra Muntadi, Randra Peru, Glottis, Ade, pharynx that enters into esophagus uh, through an aperture called gullet. Okay, gullet and glottis. Okay, so glottis is covered by this epiglottis. Glottis in cover is in the then epiglottis, Upajiva, right? So then, so let's see about the larynx. So, it helps in sound production, so it is called as voice box. The point is not Okay, so tell us now. Okay, tell us now. Right. Larynx wall is supported by how many cartilages are that support larynx? Okay, so uh, nine cartilages okay, total. Okay, okay, one thyroid, one. Cricoid, okay. Uh, another one is epiglottis, unpaid, and then carniculate cartilages are cartilage cartilages of Santorini. Okay, these are two small uh, conical nodules of elastic and cartilages attached to arytenoid cartilages. So these are two, and uh, here. Two arytenoids and two, you know, cuneiform uh, cartilages are paired. So these are four and uh, 
plus uh, four. Two, six, four, five, seven. Three plus one equals to five. Yeah, five plus four, nine. So total, the larynx is supported by nine cartilaginous uh, structures or cartilages. So one thyroid, one cricoid, one epiglottis, they are single. And cardiculate cartilages are cartilages of Santorini. These are one pair. Okay. So then two erythinoids and two cuneiform cartilages. Just number nine, number and the book is for right. So then right. So epiglottis, a thin leaf like elastic cartilaginous flap. Okay, a lid like structure. So attach it to thyroid cartilage. It prevents entry of food into trachea. Okay, so it always closes while we are eating. If it is not, the food will reach to, you know, wind pipe. That makes very, very, very uh, painful effect in our trachea. Okay, when sarana saram So that is due to, uh, so reaching our food uh, particles into wind pipe. So that is prevented by epiglottis. Right. So this is very, very important. Vocal cords or vocal folds. Right. They, these are yellow elastic fibers that which connect thyroid and erythinoid cartilages. Okay, thyroid and erythinoid cartilages mandelo adanga unta. Okay, just like the strings of a harp. Okay, so kavina kuna tigal lagu unte. Right, adanga unte. So uh, yellow. They are yellow in color. They connect thyroid and erythinoid cartilages. Okay. See, the gap between the true vocal cords and erythinoid cartilages is called rimoglottidis. We may, we may, the gap between the uh, vocal cords is called rimoglottidis. Okay. So, what is the function of these, uh, you know, vocal cords? They enhance the sound. Sound me, which vibrate just right. So that is uh, the sound which is produced from the you know these nine cartilages or the uh, larynx is enhanced by the vocal cords. Okay, so the gap between the true uh, vocal cords and uh, Right. Right. So the gap between the vocal cords, particularly true vocal cords and erythinoid cartilage is called remoglatis. Okay, option low, the gap between the uh, vocal cords is called the point examples jail examples right so larynx has two types of vocal cords one is false vocal cords okay they are not actually uh, vocal cords because they do not participate in sound production or enhancement of sound okay they are the folds of mucous membrane mucous membrane is inner part of the uh, our uh, respiratory passage then you have folds, strings, but they do not participate in sound production. They are called, they look like vocal cords, but they are not. So they are called false vocal cords. Okay. So, uh, the gap between true vocal cords and erythinoid cartilages is called rimoglottidis. Okay, right. So then, this is a famous one, uh, which has no importance. Anyway, Adam's apple, the mid-ventral part of thyroid cartilage is generally known as Adam's apple. Okay, so 
కొంతమందికి మీరు మీరు అంటే మన సరౌండింగ్స్ లో కూడా చాలా మంది చూసుకుంటారు హీరో వెంకటేష్ ఉంటుంది గొంతు ముందు పొడుచుకొచ్చినట్టు ఉంటది సో దట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ దట్ ఎక్స్ట్రా పార్ట్ ఓకే కార్టిలేజ్ సారీ ఎక్స్ట్రా అవుట్ గ్రోత్ ఆఫ్ థైరాయిడ్ కార్టిలేజ్ అంటే దాని పెద్ద సెపరేట్ ఫంక్షన్ అంటే ఏమి ఉండదు అది కొంచెం ముందుకు పొడుచుకొచ్చి ఉంటది కాబట్టి వెస్టర్న్స్ దాన్ని ఆడమ్స్ యాపిల్ అని అట్లా పిలవడం జరిగింది సో దట్ బికేమ్ అదే ఫేమస్ అయిపోయింది అలాగే కంటిన్యూ చేస్తున్నారు రైట్ సో దాన్ని యూజ్ ఏం పెద్ద లేదు రైట్ ఇన్ మేల్స్ ఇది గుర్తుంచుకోండి అమ్మా ఇది కామన్ సెన్స్ ఇది ఇట్ ఈస్ యూనో జనరల్ నాలెడ్జ్ లాగ్ ఇన్ మేల్స్ వోకల్ కార్డ్స్ ఆర్ థిక్కర్ లాంగర్ టు ప్రొడ్యూస్ లో పిచ్ సౌండ్ ఓకే సో మేల్స్ లో ఏంటంటే ఓకల్ కార్డ్స్ అనేటువంటివి మందంగా ఉంటాయి కొంచెం పొడవుగా ఉంటాయి దానివల్ల కొంచెం కోర్స్ సౌండ్ అనేది వస్తుంది వాయిస్ అనేది ఓకే వేర్ యాజ్ ఇన్ ఉమెన్ అండ్ చిల్డ్రన్ ది ఓకల్ కార్డ్స్ ఆర్ షార్ట్ అండ్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ హై పిచ్ వాయిస్ కీచ్ దానితో కూడినటువంటి వాయిస్ అనేది వస్తుంది ఉమెన్ అండ్ చిల్డ్రన్ లో దట్ ఈస్ ద రీజన్ సో మగవారి వాయిస్ లో లో పిచ్ ఉంటుంది ఓకే మందంగా ఉంటుంది ఆడవాళ్ళది కొంచెం కీచుతనం అనేది చిన్నపిల్లలు కూడా ఉండడానికి కారణం సో థిక్కర్ అండ్ లాంగర్ వోకల్ కార్డ్స్ ఇన్ మేల్ అండ్ థిన్నర్ అండ్ షార్టర్ వోకల్ కార్డ్స్ ఇన్ ఫిమేల్ అండ్ చిల్డ్రన్ రైట్ సో నెక్స్ట్ ఈస్ ట్రాకియా సో ట్రాకియా ఇట్ ఈస్ అదర్వైజ్ కాల్ విండ్ పైప్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ రీచ్డ్ అప్ టు మిడ్ థొరాసిక్ క్యావిటీ ఇంత చెప్పాను ఇట్స్ వాల్ ఈస్ సపోర్టెడ్ బై సి షేప్డ్ రింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ హైలిన్ ఇది హైలిన్ అంటే మనకు మిస్టాలజీలో వస్తుంది ఇది మళ్ళీ హైలిన్ కార్టిలేజ్ మేడ్ సి షేప్డ్ రింగ్స్ దట్ సపోర్ట్ మనకి ఇక్కడ డయాగ్రామ్ లో కనబడుతుంది చూడండి దీస్ ఆర్ ది సి షేప్డ్ రింగ్స్ ఓకే సో they do not completely uh, complete rings it way complete unde at way bu undavu venaki diri chuste undu andike vaatni c shape rings antam o shape gaadu c shape untundi so they what do they do okay they always open this windpipe okay uh, they prevent for shrinking of windpipe okay windpipe anedi oka elastic structure అండ్ కార్టిలేజ్ ఇన్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఓకే సో చాలా పల్సగా ఉంటుంది అది ఇట్లా ముడుచుకుపోయే అవకాశం ఎక్కువగా ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి దాన్ని ఎప్పుడు లాగి పట్టుకొని ఉంచే రింగ్స్ ఇది సీసీఎప్ రింగ్స్ ఓకే సో దట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇన్ సమ్ యానిమల్స్ దేర్ కాల్ తినీడియా ఓకే సో దెన్ right she shaped rings of hyaline cartilage they are made up of cartilage called hyaline cartilage so they keep trachea always open so internally trachea is lined by pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium it is rare ga vastundi pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium it is asked there is a chance of asking such kind of questions in the jail examination మన వాళ్ళు ఇటువంటి ఎక్కువ అడుగుతుంటారు ఇది మళ్ళీ మనకు ఇష్టాలజీలో వస్తుంది ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ అప్పుడు మీరు గుర్తుంచుకోవాలి సూడో స్ట్రాటిఫైడ్ సీలియేటెడ్ ఎపిథీలియం ఉంటుంది సో ద ఇంటర్నల్ లైనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాకియా దట్ ఈస్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ గుర్తుంచుకోవాలి రైట్ సో బ్రాంకై అండ్ బ్రాంకియోస్ సో ఇందాక మనం చూసినట్టుగా సో ఇన్ మిడ్ థొరాసిక్ క్యావిటీ ట్రాకియా అట్ ద లెవెల్ ఆఫ్ ఫిఫ్త్ థొరాసిక్ వాట్ ఇస్ it is divided by it is divided into two primary branch left and right so each enter into each lung okay ok ok left to branches left lo ki enter out left to lung lo ki enter out uh, right branch enters into right side okay so and each branches single branches plural branchi 
each brachas again is divided into see these are called primary bracket okay so secondary secondary bracket tertiary bracket okay and after tertiary bracket each tertiary bracket is again divided into primary bronchioles primary bronchioles okay and each primary bronchiole is again divided into secondary bronchiole secondary bronchioles and each secondary bronchiole is again divided into two tertiary bronchioles okay and each tertiary bronchiole is again divided into terminal bronchioles okay so each terminary bronchiole is again divided into respiratory bronchioles okay and each respiratory bronchiole it is not divided ends in a, a cluster of alveolar ducts okay so konni ante okokka respiratory bronchiole ki a cluster of alveolar actually a sacs idi okklo ducts anicharu anyway so anyway cluster of alveolar ducts so each ducts ends and so each duct ends with a alveolar sac and any ducts are any sacs so it overall so this is a structure this is alveolar sac okay so it is only alveolar sacs each ball like structure is alveolar alveoli alveolus singular alveolar ducts are not like alveolar duct yokka ending lo alveolar sac and it untundi a sac lo alveoli and it would be see respiratory bronchiole okay pulmonary artery terminal yeah this is terminal bronchiole elastic connective tissue okay so uh, surrounding these elective connective tissues present see alveoli is highly vascularized in japan so these are all so arterioles and venules and lymphatic vessels are also present okay so uh, circuit lo viral lagane some chala complicated uh, capillary system under the so these are highly vascularized and here you can see how it looks so it looks like a you know it of a tree laga so it is an upset uh you know um, tree laga that's why this whole appearance is called respiratory tree and you could have c shaped rings ekada question equals to one ikkada question a point kuda ostundi adi ok sari adiga question so ultimately the respiratory system ends in alveolar sacs to be precise alveoli Okay, alveoli are the terminal parts of respiratory system. So, bronchi and initial bronchioles are supported by incomplete cartilaginous rings, just like trachea. In that range, in that okay, bronchi and some initial bronchi bronchioles are not only they are also supported by C-shaped rings. Okay, so pulmonary tree, upside down tree in the branching network of trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. Okay, they appear like that is called respiratory tree and pulistam, right? So then lungs. So lungs are covered by a double layered pleura with pleural fluid between them. Okay, so lungs are covered by a peritoneal membrane, pleuroperitoneal membrane.
and then which is double layer okay so with the number of plural so outer layer is generally known as uh, parietal pleuro uh, parietal layer inner is visceral pleuro visceral layer okay between these two uh, pleural membranes okay so there is a pleural fluid is present okay that acts as a shock absorber or that reduces the friction we all know that so pleuro peritoneal membrane remember that so from external nostrils to terminal bronchioles okay that area is generally known as conducting part so that means the oxygen co2 is conducted okay external nostrils nunchi terminal bronchioles varaku unnatundi area ni manam em anustam anante conducting part anta it brings air to alveoli and it clears the dust particles and it this part humidifies the humidifies and brings air to uh, air to body temperature okay normal body temperature the air is koche due to conducting part the okay so right so then alveoli plus the duct alveolar respiratory duct okay so that part is uh, respiratory or exchange part Uh, site of actual diffusion of O2 and CO2. Ikkada anaku their condition. Capillaries. Also. so alveolar ducts and alveoli they are part of respiratory exchange or exchange part so where actual ex uh, exchange of uh, o2 and co2 takes place between blood and atmospheric air okay we inhale atmospheric air air into you know these uh, alveoli so there the blood receives the oxygen and alveoli receives the co2 from the blood okay so again we will see the diagram anyway yeah lungs key uh, lungs are present in thoracic chamber which is an air tight chamber completely tight ga untunda area right so lungs ki dorsal side vertebral column untundi so ventral side sternum untundi lateral side ribs are present and the lower part dome shaped diaphragm is present okay so any change in the volume of thoracic cavity will reflect will reflect in the lung cavity or pulmonary volume the pulmonary volume is changed means so the lung shape is also changed okay so that is uh, its structure yeah what is respiration respiration involves breathing or pulmonary ventilation okay diffusion of gases transport of gases gases exchange between blood and systemic capillaries utilization of oxygen by the cells uh, that is nothing but the cellular res respiration so breathing we all know that so inspiration and expiration includes breathing so diffusion of gases or you can also call it as exchange of gases across the alveolar membrane okay alveolar membrane the gram out in the oxygen enters into the blood co2 enters into the alveolar so that is exchange of gases and gula we can call it as exchange of gases okay so transport of gases so this is the major part in the respiration one of equa dinu in a concentrate just now uh theory exams right so when the oxygen reaches the blood okay so the oxygen is carried to the cells by the blood and when uh, cells release the co2 
that is also carried out by the blood to the tissue uh, to the lungs okay so the, that is how the transport uh, takes place we all know that gas is exchanged between the blood in the systemic capillaries and tissues okay so after transport time the oxygen will be reached to the tissues so the tissues will take over the oxygen and release the co2 into the blood that's it so after re uh, reaching the blood into the tissues the oxygen is utilized okay for the production of energy and carbon dioxide is released water molecule is released so total this process is called cellular respiration no need to explain that so mechanism of breathing so idi manaku indlo oka rendu points kutunchukovalsina ayyane mechanism of breathing so inspiration and expiration untundi uh, it involves inspiration and expiration inspiration occurs if idi okati manaku basic common sense okati em gurtunchukovalante gali lokalki enduku ellali why should air enters should enter into our lungs okay, what is the necessity means so the air always moves from high pressure area to low pressure area so when in the lungs the pressure is decreased is lesser than the atmospheric air okay so automatically the uh, and a low pressure area is formed within the lungs okay so that makes the external or atmospheric air possibly enters into our lungs okay and expiration is happening whenever any pressure external pressure okay so if we press a balloon okay the the uh, air is released from that balloon just like that in uh, lungs are also like balloon when uh, after the inspiration okay so if at all some uh, external pressure is uh, <coughs> you know uh, exerted on the lungs so its internal pressure is increased it becomes higher than the atmospheric pressure so then the expiration takes place ee rendu manaku basic things are it vandi ardham aithe so total uh, breathing mechanism anedi chala easy okay so it is achieved with the help of gurtunchukondi diaphragm and external and internal uh interposter muscles so particularly external intercostal muscles gurtu chukondi right so diaphragm and external intercostal muscles okay so that is uh steps in the breathing right so this is how the breathing takes place see here what is what happens here overall the lung size is being expanded okay so due to the expansion of lungs uh, you know uh, inner area okay there will be a low pressure area is formed so uh, air is entering into the lung okay so see volume of thorax increased ribs sternum are raised okay ribs and it will be spring lag untai avi pai ki netta padadi okay uh, they are pushed upward region okay and uh, sternum is uh, pulled forward region okay so the, what does it make it makes lungs to expand because they are almost attached uh, they will always keep lungs in a uh, you know tight uh, condition whenever they are expanded the lungs are also expanded that makes a low, low pressure area within the lungs okay the then that causes the entering of the oxygen or uh, air atmospheric air into the you know the lungs in the same way when these expanded ribs and uh, uh, you know contracted or expanded dome shaped uh, diaphragm okay so after their expansion they, they will become they will come to normal shape so here see the size of this uh, internal cavity of the lungs is reduced 
so that exerts pressure on its wall. So the air is automatically forcefully thrown out of the lungs to the exterior by external nares or external nostrils. Okay, so ribs and sternum return to original position. Volume of thora thorax is decreased. Okay, diaphragm relaxed and arched upwards. Okay, so the straight ga ikra actual ga straight ga outundi. Ikra malli vangu thundi baanam laga arched. Okay, then what layam outundi? So the size of the uh, lungs or thoracic cavity is decreased. Okay, that exerts pressure on the walls of the lungs. Okay, the air is expelled out from the lungs to outside. Right. So that is how it happens. So, so entering entering of atmospheric air into the lungs is called you know inspiration. Okay, it is an active process. It is an important point, which is active process, and so he, Inspiration is active process. So, because it involves contraction of muscles of diaphragm. So, this is important point. You should remember the muscles of diaphragm are called phrenic muscles. And the external intercostal muscles. Okay. So, here due to the contraction of diaphragm muscles, and external intercostal muscles. Okay, so the inspiration takes place. points It is an active process due to the contraction of phrenic muscles or diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. Simply the thoracic cavity is increased. Simple, right? So then the contraction of diaphragm muscles increases the volume of thoracic chamber okay and increase the inspiration in the anterior and forward anterior posterior axis okay so munduku uh, venaki you know expand out the thoracic chamber and due to contraction of these two uh, diaphragm and external intercostal muscles okay the contraction of external intercostal muscles lifts up the ribs Okay, spring laga close ga on the ribs and it will be pike less than. And the sternum causing a sternum would have put the pike upward and forward. Okay, so causing an, in, an increase, an increase in the volume, an increase in the volume of thoracic chamber in the dorso ventral axis. Okay, overall, the thoracic chamber size increase out. So, due to action of pulmonary volume, okay, uh, due to this action, this action, pulmonary volume is also increased. That means lungs are expanded due to which intrapulmonary pressure is decreased. Okay, uh, alpha the low pressure area. So, when compared with atmospheric pressure. So that makes possible uh, forcibility. Forcible movement of movement of oxygen, uh, sorry, movement of outside air into the lungs is called inspiration. Simple it is an active process, contraction of intercostal muscles, contraction of diaphragm takes place that increases the chest volume or the lungs uh, you know area or thoracic uh, size is increased that causes a low pressure area within the lungs so uh, outer atmospheric air enters into lungs expiration release of alveolar air okay mana uh, lungs low under air to the outside is called expiration it's a passive process. Automatically, it's a Okay. So, in the end, lungs in the pressure work with the simple. I have a normal position. Okay. They are not contracting. So, after contraction, the dome-shaped diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, they will come to normal position. 
they are relaxing. So that's why. So automatically the pressure is exerted on the lungs. So the pressure, just like pressing like uh, thing occurs on the lungs. So the air is forcibly expelled out of the lungs. That's it. That is, uh, you know, um, expiration. Uh, yeah. It is a passive process. It is achieved by relaxation of diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. Returns the returns uh, diaphragm. Diaphragm and sternum to their normal positions, okay, and reduces the thoracic thoracic volume. Thoracic volume is reduced, and their uh, pulmonary volume is also reduced. So. The forced exp expiration uh, is occurred. So, in this, uh, sometimes whenever we want to uh, release more, you know, air out of our lungs, okay, some lateral abdominal muscles also help in a forced expiration. Okay, so manam balang balavan danga ekwa galin better udleyali ante. In addition to external intercostal muscles and uh, diaphragm muscles, lateral abdominal muscles also help in a forced expiration. In a healthy human breathe, it is a question. 12 to 16 uh, times per minute. What is spirometer? It is used to estimate the volume of air involved in breathing movements. So, breathing movements law in the air and involved in the some to estimate to assess the uh, lungs health. Okay, so the spirometer is used. Yeah, respiratory volumes and capacities. These are only manam gutun scores and points on time low. And the main anti and so, normal breathing value, it is otherwise called as tidal value. Tidal value. Okay. So, in a normal breathing, in normal breathing uh, times, Okay, so we inspire almost 500 ml of air into our lungs and in the same way we expire almost 500 uh, ml of uh, air. So that volume is generally known as tidal value or normal breathing value. Okay, so its value is uh, 500 ml. So that is 6000 to 8000 ml per minute. Per minute, open in Right, so that is tidal value. This is the minimum point. This is the inspiratory reserve value. So, excuse me. Hello. Right. So, inspiratory reserve value. The additional volume of air after tidal value. And uh, particularly, when we expire the air, still there is some amount of air is always present. So, that's value is uh, inspiratory reserve value. Okay. So, it is about 2500 to 3000. 3, okay. So, then Expiratory reserve value. ERB. 
So, first one is TV. This is TV. And this is IRV. Okay. And this is ERV, expiratory reserve value. Okay. Additional value of air after tidal value. Okay. It is 1000 uh, ml to 1100 ml. Okay. So here, Manam and tidal value and expire normal expiration tarvata lungs low on day twenty volume of air value the thousand of the this is inspiration. Okay. So manam uh, inspire cheshnaka still we can uh, how much we can uh, take the oxygen into the lungs is the uh, inspiratory reserve value. This is expiratory reserve value. Okay. And the residual value, RV, after forceful and the complete manam, asal yanta biotech pampala or the maximum full capacity after forceful expiration, also some amount of air is always present within the you know respiratory passage okay so that's that is generally known as residual volume including lungs okay so that is also 1100 to 1200 ml so these are useful in clinical diagnosis or pulmonary disorders if we go to sport circuit normal tidal value irv erv and rv Okay, so if you could have nine inspiratory capacity, you are new, but they are not much important. Just uh, I'll read out after normal expiration, it is the total volume of air a person can uh, inhale. Okay, and a maximum and the uh, inhale. So that is tidal value plus inspiratory reserve value. Taluste, I see. Okay, and the maximum inspiration of matter 3000 to 3500 or 4000. Functional uh, residual capacity and the Miglu, right? The volume of air that remains, the volume of air that remains in the lungs after normal expiration. Normal expiration, Tarvata, uh, in the so expired reserve value and residual value. Taluste, Functional residual capacity also. Okay, so then vital capacity, total, uh, sorry, is the total capacity that after forced expiration, Palavantanga, Manam, Galen battery is the maximum value of air a person can breathe in low pulp is the maximum put in the Manam Batek Galen or the other one the Odilin Tarata. In the Varakumanam, Gali local discovery from an area, vital capacity, tidal value plus inspiratory reserve value plus expiratory reserve value. That is the vital capacity. Okay. Then total lung capacity, it is also known as uh, TLC. Anniga. So you put work on TLC equal to vital capacity plus reserve value or ex expiratory reserve value. Plus inspired reserve value, tidal value plus R. Simple ga, you put to the reserve for me. Right. So, exchange of gases. In that kind of way, starting E page, put to the for me. So, tidal value, IRV, ERV, and RV. Okay. So, vital capacity, put to the for me, put to the for me. Right. So, this is... Uh, Alveoli. Alveoli are the primary sites of gases exchange. Okay. So gases exchange also. Also occur between blood and tissue. It is secondary exchange. So overall, manaki. 
Okay. What you are seeing is an alveoli. So this is an alveoli, and this is the capillary surrounding an alveoli. Okay. And this place is first uh, site of gases exchange after inspiration okay so we take the air from here okay in this uh, through the respiratory passage and here this is blood capillary so in general so the deoxygenated blood okay that reaches to the alveoli region or the lungs okay the by, by pulmonary artery okay so this pulmonary artery contains uh, impure blood. That means CO2 is present more. Okay, CO2 enters into the alveoli. Oxygen enters into the blood capillary. Okay, so this is the first uh, place of gases exchange. Okay, and then gases are also exchanged uh, between blood and tissues. Okay, so the blood is taken to the all the tissues so there oxygen is given to the tissues or cells and co2 is taken from the cells okay so that is the actual point uh, in both uh, above places oxygen and co2 are exchanged by simple diffusion alien so from higher concentration to lower higher partial pressure to lower partial pressure so that is called simple diffusion uh, in every every respiration, simple diffusion is the uh, principle we should remember. Okay, so some factors that influence gases exchange are partial pressure of gases. Okay, solubility of the gases, thickness of respiratory member. Respiratory membrane under the end thick So this membrane and this membrane, these two. Combinedly known as respiratory membrane. Okay, endothelium of the blood capillary and this epithelium of the uh, alveolar alveolus. Okay, is combinedly known as respiratory membrane. So this the the less thickness, the more the uh, exchange of gases or rapid the exchange of gases. Okay, right. So we are here. So surface area, okay, and the available the area in the energy. So distance of diffusion, okay. So ikadki ikad get the distance on the energy. So the exchange of gas takes place. So what is partial pressure of a gas? Idi manaku ardangavali. Okay, so it is generally uh, denoted by small p. Okay, so here. In a mixture of gas, okay, okay, mixture of gas law, right? A gas mixture law. It is a single gas pressure in a mixture of gases. What is partial pressure? And okay, ten gases, okay, okay, chamber law, nine in a day. So, uh, avi, anni galse of hundred. Uh, mm, I want to MMHG partial pressure ni, uh, if they are exerting okay one gas okay one gas in the exert chest the then you have wall spina and any partial pressure and the individual gas pressure is called partial pressure of gas okay so we should understand this concept then only we should we can understand the uh, next topic Okay, and it is represented by PO2 for oxygen, PCO2 for CO2. Okay, 
So PCO2 and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. PO2 means partial pressure of oxygen. We all know that. So table here we should remember some values. Okay. Atmosphere partial pressure of oxygen is 159, 21% of the atmosphere total air load. Right. So CO2 into the point three four point three four percentage into the okay. So when after inspiration, okay, ikkad got sir. And the by the way, the alveolar region got sir. The partial pressure of oxygen will be one not four. The partial pressure of CO two will be forty. And the ikkad nunchi tissues nunchi ikkad ki. So tissues the graph forty out to the ikkad forty out to the CO two ka partial pressure. And then so deoxygenated blood and this one. This blood contains oxygen partial pressure just 40. Alveolar length is 104. Here it is 40. Here it is 140. This is high partial pressure. This is low partial pressure of oxygen. So this is what we need to know. Okay. So here it is 40. Here it is 40. This is low partial pressure of oxygen. So oxygen enters into the capillary. So due to lower low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood capillary. Okay. So that is the reason. Of the diffusion or exchange. Okay. After reaching into the blood capillaries, 104 plus the 95. So in the systemic circulation, the oxygen partial pressure is 95 mm Hg. Okay. So then the same oxygen reaches to the uh, tissues. Okay, still in the blood, blood lone undi. Okay. So blood capillaries length of the 95 the system circulation. But tissues length of the 40 in the cavity, oxygen will goes uh, will go from capillaries to tissues. <laughs> that is about the oxygen, right? CO2 in the atmospheric air, it is 0.3 in the alveoli and the atmosphere nunchi alveoli put circuit 40. So deoxygenated blood low 45. So we discussed already about this. So here the solubility of CO2 is almost very, very higher than the uh, oxygen. It is almost 10 to 20 times greater than the oxygen. So even though there is a small difference in the partial pressure, just a 5% difference. Okay. So but solubility is high. Okay, exchange uh, capacity is also high of carbon dioxide comparing with the oxygen. So, ikkada CO2 45 mmHg undi. Ikkada CO2 40 mmHg undi. So, from higher concentration to lower concentration. Okay? CO2 from blood capillaries to alveoli is reached by simple diffusion. Okay, so, uh, ikkada. Oxygenated blood. You can even the oxygen entering the so after and a CO2 equal partial pressure will be down to 40 again. Okay. So here in the systemic blood and manchi raktam low CO2, so pure blood contains CO2 partial pressure 40 mm Hg. Pure blood contains CO2 partial pressure as 40 mm Hg. Okay. So Whereas in the tissue, it is 45 because the CO2 is released due to the respiration. From the tissues, the CO2 enters into the systemic circulation. Then it will become impure blood. Okay, deoxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood does that. Deoxygenated blood. We should have. Mirdini by by her jazz no slit. Minimum common sense to even good to die. Okay, okay, good to spell oxygen by the one fifth nine on the alveolar one one not four. So oxygen in our local government, you can talk to the end of the one not four, you can forty. And the gay can see it was okay. CO tang all blood nunci alveolar lale, lungs local lale. So under you can echo to the end of the forty five. So you can end to the alveolar. So nalva is in alveolar. Right. So cells that are the cells low CO2 release it regard cells low echo go to the tissues low echo go to the so in the tissues it is 45 mmHg whereas in systemic or in uh, 
pure blood or oxygenated blood, it is 40. So from higher uh, partial pressure, 45 to lower partial pressure, 40, okay, the CO2 enters. So in this way, the oxygen exchange takes place in two places. One is at alveoli and its surrounding blood capillaries and uh, between the tissues and its surrounding blood capillaries. Okay, at one place oxygen is taken, uh, CO2 is sent out. Okay, and in another place, uh, the CO2 is taken and oxygen is given to the tissues or cells. All right, CO2 solubility is uh, 20, not 220, 20 to 25 times higher than that of oxygen. So, its diffusion through the membrane is much higher than the oxygen. Okay, that is the uh, reason. The diffusion membrane is made up of three layers. Okay, so that is one thin squamous epithelium of alveolar wall it is good to call it squamous epithelium the question the endothelium of alveolar capillaries okay that is second one and basement membrane or material between them what matte unde material so this is the endothelium, this is squamous epithelium of alveoli. So e mood layers are that also to the so it is very thin uh, border, so easy for diffusion of gases. And last uh, it is pulmonary gas exchange or external respiration. In the Ganji Pindi, alveoli the Garazari Dani, pulmonary gas exchange or external respiration and term. Okay, whereas the exchange of gases between the tissues and capillaries is called internal respiration systemic gases exchange and okay so this is uh, today's class uh, i think it is recorded okay so i'll stop here let's continue